It is just a huge honor today to be podcast interviewing Claudia Dabdu. How are you doing? Great, thank you. Thank you so much for coming over. I, I felt horrible bringing her over because she's an interior decorator right here in, in Ahwatukee. And she's coming into a bachelor pad with uh, three boys. So she's probably uh, she's probably thinking, this guy must be dumber than a rock. Claudia Dabdu has 24 years of experience in interior design. After graduating from the University of Arizona, she has worked for a design firm. In 2007, she started her own company, Diamore Interior Design Studio, right here in Ahwatukee. Her wish is to help her customers make the most of their budget, space, and time, but foremost, making sure the customer is satisfied. Most of her clientele are getting through referrals. Thank you so much um, um, for coming by. So, um, Thank you. So, is interior design, is it more science or art? I mean, some people look at the Mona Lisa and say, I wouldn't hang that in my front room. Other people pay $50 million for it. So, when, when you're doing interior design, how, how much of it is science versus just what you like or preference? or, or? I, I think it's a combination of uh, people's likes and art and their, their background and how my experience and my education and putting, mixing it all together. And uh, all explaining the customer why I refer in certain things, and at the end making the right choices for my customer to be happy. And so, so you you have two types of customers. You have you have home yes. and business. Yes. W- which one do you, would you like more? Um, my reason of going to study in this career is because I wanted to help people, and, and homes is just the easiest, you know, everybody has a home, but, and then it actually turns into my customers wanting me to also do their businesses. Um, if they have, um, so it, it works perfectly, and I love doing both. Um, it's an honor to work with my customers. Ah, oh, that's nice. So, so, um, so if someone is thinking about this, They've been in their house, they've lived there 10, 20 years, and they're thinking to redo it. Your website is D A M O R E I D S I N C. Demore. How, how do you pronounce that? D M O R E I D S Inc. D M O R E I D S Inc. Yes. D A M O R E I D S I N C. So, what are the, my homies in Ahwatukee going to find if they go to your website? You will ha- find uh, some of my work, um, some of the links to House, for example, where I received um, several of awards for the last few years, and other um, uh, medias where um, I also received awards. And, and besides the links to um, the media, um, just an, uh, of a little bit more of what I do, um, and how to contact me to help you. So is, is the website the main way they contact you or do you also give out like a phone number or email or? Oh, certainly, my email and my phone number is there. But you but will you give it out on the podcast or yeah. would you prefer not? It, it is, uh, my phone number is 480-751-9938 and my email is claudia at diamoreidsinc.com. 480-751-9938. Now, am I biased? Am I wrong? Is is this most when when it's the home? Is this the wife all into this, or do you have actually men that care what color their walls are? And I mean, is it, is this mostly uh, uh, the wife fixing up the house, or is it men too? I what do, what percent is the wife and what percent is the husband? I do mainly remodels where I do the the kitchen and the floors and painting, and uh, I will say that most of my work is actually with. Like 85 with just men. 85% with just men? Yes. Oh my God, I didn't see that coming anywhere. Yes. Why would it be 85% men? Yeah, are, are they I'm, single or are they married? Married. Most of the time, They're the married. woman comes into the picture and we discuss that, or, or the woman contacts me, but both of them, when I meet with them, are present. And then. Um, but mainly sometimes it's just the men that makes the de- make the decisions and then if we i go further and help them besides cabinetry and flooring and uh with furniture then it's the woman usually that i so kitchen with. cabinet hard structures is dad yes but furniture and yeah i mean i, I yes yeah. the men is still in contact but usually it's the woman that takes that part more so I, I've heard a lot of people um, chair side, you know, it took me 30 years being a dentist to where they say, well, you know, I, 
I want to redecorate, and that's a big part of it, with one eye, but my other eye is thinking resale value. And so some, some people say, well, be careful what you do because if you're gonna invest that money, you want to up the value of your house. You don't want to do something and you really like it, but then you can't sell it because no one else likes it. How, how do you balance between, I like this, but you're like, but you want to make your property worth more money? Um, I usually ask my customers how long they've been in the home and how long they think they're gonna stay there. If they're actually, I mean, then the investment is worth. If they know that they're gonna move, then they try to help them save money by saying, by showing them another products that they could maybe be okay while they live there, um, not compromising, but and 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 making it more <coughs> conscious value for their house value and and then the investment they're gonna put into the home. Yeah, and and of your what what percent of the clients like like, like me? I mean. I live three miles from my office. I'm, I'm never leaving here. My four boys were born on Wachuki, no matter where they move. They're not just come back to see dad, they got friends here. So I'm, I'm never leaving this house. What, what percent of your clients at a, at a house say, oh, this is my last house, I'm never leaving, versus I'm only gonna be here, you know, I plan on not dying in this house. It's, it's a little bit of everything. I have a lot of customers that actually sold the old big house and they're in the, they ended up just a husband and wife and moving to a smaller home. And that You know, you know why I won't do that? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I because my that. my father, my <laughs> my dad had seven children. And he's always cussing and screaming because whenever the last one moved out, another one moved back. And he just said, "My god, am I ever going to get am I ever going to get all my kids out of my house?" Well, I got four boys and you know, life life's tough and plus holidays like Christmas and Easter and you know all those things you know I I don't I don't want to take their bedrooms away I want them no matter what happens they always still gotta I'm I'm this I feel the same I I still my mom, my parents are still in the same house and I have a small house behind the service and and uh, my kids grew up there and I think uh, I fixed it up right now but I think I might stay there just because it's where they grew up and unless life changes dramatically but I think I'm I was prefer to stay there so what would you um describe how would you describe um oh i know some people come here from like north dakota and the first time they're like oh my god there's there's no trees and and there's no brick and and some of these homes in awatuki like like if you go around equestrian center I, out of nowhere is like this brick home that looks like it should have been built in chicago or new jersey or um, what, what would you, how would you describe the overall flavor of all it took you if someone was moving down from North Dakota or Canada? Well, I, I mean, I don't know from their perspective, but I know my perspective just from Tucson to Phoenix and especially to Ahwatukee. I love Ahwatukee because it's like a small town and a big city. Um, I love Ahwatukee because all the palm trees that I don't even think you get close to the beach. I love palm trees. I love Awatuki because of this, the weather. Um, I think when it comes to the house from the outside, they all look the same. But um, um, it still gives her that clean, um, professional, I don't know, nice character that Awatuki is. I love it when I go climb a telegraph pass. Or what, what's the mountain we climb? The other Corona one? Deloma. Corona Deloma? Yeah. I love just looking down on Wachuki because you know I grew up in a small. I grew up in Wichita, Kansas, and it is. It's the, it's just a very small little community of eighty five thousand people, and you have no idea that it's in the middle of this four million person metro spread out over a hundred square miles. I, I just absolutely love it. I still remember my son telling me, "Mom, do you know that Chandler is just you cross the highway? It's Chandler." <laughs> it was a big deal for him. <laughs> How old is he? Now he's 19. 19? Yes. Wow. Um, so, true or false? I heard um, that if you want to get the most return on your investment, put your money in the kitchen. That a, a kitchen is the biggest deal breaker in buying or selling a house. Do you agree with that or not really? Oh, certainly. I think Certainly. Through, yes. Um, from uh, the beginning of a home, you know, the kitchens was at least the room in the back where the, with the door broke 
cascading door with a little window and nobody went to the kitchen. It was like inappropriate to go people, um, guests to come to the kitchen because it was not really taken care of. It was mainly that like the living room and dining room where people showcase their furniture and entertain people. And as generations and time pass by, like the kitchen is the most, wel has to be the most welcoming nicer space in your home because the living room and dining rooms are coming to pass like even if you have a, a small to big gatherings people end up in the kitchens now you know that is amazing i haven't even had that memory um my both of my grandmas lived about a mile apart in parsons kansas and both of them had a door hmm. from their dining room to their kitchen and you're right the dining room was really nice and then you went in the kitchen it was drab tile white you know just it was very drab and dark and dreary like, and now it's reversed like, they'll, they'll be just as mean and don't come in i'll be back let me get it for you <laughs> and, yeah and now it's like um no it's like you want to be in the kitchen and like it entered like the appliances are a big thing the cabinetry um the way it looks um the hardware the plumbing fixtures, the flooring, and like everything has to work together. I've noticed a couple other trends. I mean, I've lived here 30 years, and it seems like 30 years ago, every new house had a trash compactor in the kitchen. And now a lot of new houses don't have trash compactors. Is, is that falling out of favor? I think it, it I mean, if people that loved it still kept skipping it, and some people just like, I have no interest for this thing, and never used it. It's like even dishwashers. I have a lot of customers that are like, I never use it. I, I, I just don't care. I mean, it's only have a few plates or whatever, you know, and I don't, I don't want it. So I usually just put a cabinet for meanwhile, if, if she decides to sell the house, that it could be, uh, be used for a dishwasher. For well, they don't have a dishwasher. How do they clean their dishes? <laughs> they got to wash them by hand? A lot of customers, they do that. You know, actually, you just got to wash them by hand anyway, because if you don't basically wash... Your, your dishwasher only lasts a year. Yeah. I mean, the dishwasher, there's two things that never work long-term in a kitchen. One is the uh, the ice machine. It's in the refrigerator. Uh, yeah, you, you can buy the nicest refrigerator sold on earth, and the ice machine's always not working. Yes. I, whenever I started a new, when I started a new project, um, I encouraged my customers to go visit, uh, to go with me visit an appliance because the appliances have changed so much, the ovens, the refrigerators, and now there are refrigerators with um, with cameras inside, uh, ovens that are like um, with um, um, steam ovens that are cooked faster and it's, and it's not taking the flavors away from the meals. Um, so it's so much more that if you haven't redone your kitchen in a while, that you, you'd be amazed how you can transform your cooking, your habits and around the kitchen and how much it could help you. And One of the things I'm noticing now that I'm 55 is that um, like my stove, the numbers are so small on the dial. I mean, I have to like lean my head over or put on my readers and I'm like, they're, they're, they're designing these stoves for millennials. But you know, as, as the population gets older and older and older, that, that print's gotta get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, <laughs> another, another thing on the value, um, I've heard many uh, patients debate. Some say putting a pool in your backyard in hot Arizona you're going to get your money back out of it and it's going to raise the property of your house other people say nope you put a pool in your house if it costs you 10 grand to put in the pool you won't you will not get the 10 grand back out of your house it will not raise the price of the house for the cost of the pool where, where do you see it um i have friends about their house because with no pool because i didn't want a pool and i have friends look for a pool so it's, it, i think there's a little bit of uh, for everything but if you live in a house that you want to put a pool and enjoy a pool, life is too short. And if you know that you want to stay two, three years and enjoy that pool, I don't see why not. You'll never guess why I don't have a pool. <laughs> Four boys, Arizona. And I said to the boys, I said, let's put in a pool. And they go, no. And I said, why? And they go, every one of my four boys had, you know, two, three or four really close friends. And all their friends had a pool. And they didn't have a place to throw a football, a frisbee, or whatever. And he goes, Dad, we're the only yard with grass. We're the only yard that has a park in the back where you can play a game, you know. So I never put in. It's, it's kind of like I never bought a boat because if all your friends have boats, why the hell would you want to buy a boat? You don't, you don't want a boat. You want a friend with a boat. Uh, you don't want a swimming pool. You want a next-door neighbor with a swimming pool. <laughs> yes. Um. 
That's that's pretty interesting. I was the opposite. All my um, my kids' friends didn't have a pool, so they all ended up in my house all the time with, with the pool. My kids love their pool, enjoy their pool every day. So um, a lot of this, you design it, but how do you find the actual people that actually do it? I mean, so you go and design a new kitchen, but who do you get to tear out all the hammers and nails? And because that, because that's a big stressful part of it. Yes. I mean, everybody has horror stories of giving a contractor three thousand dollars down and then never seeing them again. Yes, and and that's why um, I prefer and some customers hire me before the contractor because I can put the whole design and, and drawings and renderings and all the product together. Um, when it comes to the product, I, I'm a dealer for a lot of the products. I buy them directly. Um, so I can help the customer save money instead of... And uh, when it comes to the drawings and, and approving all the design, then we have a scope of work that we can show contractors and, and maybe interview one or three contractors and see which one is the best for the project. And then I can help the customer save money in different ways. So do you have a lot of good contractors you work with for years? Oh, certainly, yes. So what kind of contractors do you usually have to work with? It'd be a, a plumber's usually different than an electrician. I mean, how many? Usually I prefer just a general contractor that takes over the whole project, depending on the scope. If it's just installing cabinet, obviously. Um, but then you need the granite or the countertop, the plumbing. It's, 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 it's by job. Um, every job is so different. What would you say if, if they're sitting there thinking, I want to remodel my kitchen or this or that, but they're, but they don't, it, it's kind of like dentistry. A lot, a lot of people don't go to the dentist because they think they need, you know, like $10,000 of work done and it turns out they need like, you know, 380 or, um, if someone's laying there in bed watching this and thinking or, or listening to the podcast, that's what's been the most popular on these. They live in the uh, Ahwatukee and they work downtown, so they got an hour commute and the podcasts are exploding because they listen to the radio it's 30 minutes of commercials and then as they talk about news it's a bunch of toxic crap you know clinton and putin and russia and isis and by the time they get to work they're depressed so the patients are all telling me they're all doing podcasts um they they might listen to one on cooking or quilting or raising a boy or you know children they're listening they're might thinking like well how much is 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 your average project i mean for the average person in Ahwatukee who said, I want to remodel my kitchen and do, like, what, what is an average project? Or is it just all over the board? It's all over the board. Uh, it depends um, the manufacturer of the cabinets and how, the, how they're made and how the, to price them. And then the granite that you choose, it could be, like, super expensive. Or, and now it becomes a lot, some of them are a lot more valued. Um, the plumbing too, um, but that's where I, I can come in and help them. Like if they, um, I look at the space and I know how, about how much it will cost for, with what they're trying to do, then I can give an estimate. And I charge a fee because it does take a lot of time, but it, I think it's well investment because I can, I mean, even if they decide not to work with me, they can take it someplace else and, and have um, all the product selection, and, you know, and ideas of what they should choose or not, and and why, and to make it a, a more. So, if they contact your website, you you have an initial. Is there an initial consultation fee? Not the first one. I believe that I. I mean, I, they have to meet me to make a, a decision. But once I meet with the customer and explain what I can do, yes, I do charge from two fifty to a thousand, depending on the uh, scope of work. And that's the so you meet on location. I mean, on lo location. Yeah. So, so if someone all these listeners right now, um, it doesn't cost anything for you to come to their home and, and no, meet the them? first meeting, no. It's okay, so they can call you. Yes, it's complimentary. Complimentary, and then usually the design is usually somewhere between two hundred fifty to a thousand bucks. Yes. See that that's. A lot less money than I thought it would have been. I, I can save them thousands of dollars because I can put the whole plan together for them. And like I said, if, even if they decide not to work with me, they have a plan of, to go further after or, or save money. I, sometimes I, I, I was, I'd be honest and tell them to save some more money because that way you can get it exactly how you want it. You know, I make, next year we can start your project and you'd be, you'd be happier at the end. Yeah. And um, 
what are like um just like the top five reasons people have you come to their house i mean like we talked about kitchen i mean well what, what, when, when someone calls you and you go out to their house what are like the top five things they're looking for um to remodel their kitchen um would, would kitchen yeah. be number one but number one uh bathrooms uh, another one it would be like uh, walls. I, I I study architecture, so I'm very good with space planning and how if they should remove a wall, especially now that the open floor plan is is very um, um, likable. Um, so uh, the, how they can make the kitchen bigger and take away the dining mm -hmm. set and put a big island. Um, so those that is true. Like, when we were little. Um, it was all these little box compartment rooms. And now you go in these houses and you walk in the front door and you can see into the kitchen, you can see into the front room, you can see into the, it really has changed. And the other thing I love so much more is when we were little, every store had a drop ceiling and it was only usually like maybe eight or nine feet out, but even as a little kid, you could jump up and touch it sometimes. And they always had all these water stains. Yeah. And now you go into all these stores and there's no drop ceiling and you can see the plumbing and the the air conditioner, man, it, it looks it looks cooler oh, yeah. than that little drabby <laughs> drop ceiling. It's kind of yes. claustrophobic and. I totally agree. <laughs> yeah, and I like that ki the houses are open now because I mean you're not sitting in individual rooms and it's more um, conversation even for entertaining or. I mean, sometimes when it comes to noise, because if you have the TV or you have company, it does bother because it, the whole noise travels the whole space, but. But I, I, I think the open concept of, of the spaces now is, 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 um, is, is great for families. The, wor the worst thing, uh, um, raising my, uh, I have four boys. One of them is married, gone. I got three more in the nest. And um, you yell for them and no one responds because they all got their headphones on and they're all listening to YouTube or, or whatever. So, they only, so even though they're in the next room, if I'm gonna get my boy, I have to send them all a text. <laughs> they'll get it. They'll get a text when they hear me. Um, uh, yeah, I I can I do I did that too. <laughs> you do that too. Um, another thing. Um, let, let's switch to. Um, um, well, well, first of all, we we talked a lot about um, kitchens. Is there anything else you want to say about kitchen? What what's hot and what's not? I know there's one brand of refrigerator you see a lot. Um, what, what what's the one that's I, they never had when I was little, but. So is it, oh, oh, like the, those two stainless steels. I mean, it used yeah. to be refrigerator used to be a box yes. with one door, but now it seems like they're mostly gone to two door. Two doors, and and there's also built in. That's why if, if you go to an appliance center, you'd be amazed of how many. Also, the drawer refrigerators underneath the island um, for oh. for refrigerators or for um, or, or or wine coolers. Um, those are very desirable on the islands or for cheese and um, um, vegetables. Um, the, um, but the, I, I mean, I, I think through the years, the more higher end appliances are, I can see the customers are knowing why the extra money is, is worth to spend and um, the warranties and the service that they get and and, and 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 the overall look of the space, and and that's where you spend the your whole life, you know, most of the, in the kitchen, like most a lot of the time. You know. So so what's hot and what's not in a bathroom? Jet sprays, the water features for the showers. Oh okay. Uh, the big tubs and, and separate tubs, not like the 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 ones that are like with built in, more like separate um, sitting by themselves. Things, um, especially right the remod most of the remodels are because of the cabinets being so low from uh, now higher to the 35 and a half inches. So cabinets are going higher? higher. And why is that? Because people are getting taller? or, or? I, I don't know who designed them lower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I mean, I, I'm short and I still don't like my, my base to be short. Uh, this Now they're like the kitchen height, 35 and a half. So it just makes huh. it more convenient. So kitchen cabinets are going, or kitchen cabinetry is going higher. Yes. And what, yes. what did it used to be, and what is it headed towards now? Uh, in the bathroom, it was like twenty-eight and a half or something. Thirty and a half. Yeah, more like desk height. Yeah. And now they're like kitchen height, like um, thirty-five and a half. 
Huh. Yes. Interesting. So that, that's, that's one of the difference when you... You know, just, just trying to think of what I hear in Ahwatukee or, you know, people run into talking. Seems like another big dilemma is they, um, they bought a house and it was, say, it was three bedroom and an office. But now they need to turn the office into a bedroom because maybe mom retired with them, a kid came back home, whatever, but there's no closet in there. And um, so what do, what do you do when you're trying to turn an office into a bedroom? Add an office, I mean, add a closet or... Do you, have, do you have one like removable or do you build one in no, or... build one in Yeah. or, or sometimes um, wood cabinetry, like European look where you have the cabinets from wall to wall. Yeah. That is, uh, <laughs> so what's the what's the uh, Japanese was a feng, feng, shui? feng shui? Have you have you ever had a customer that wanted that? Oh, certainly. Really? Yes. Uh, I or, think are they always um, Japanese or or Chinese or, or? I think through the years, so with all my experience, I do it automatically because I feel that um, I just believe in certain things of uh, the practice that. Um, so you you believe in that that there's yeah, it's, that it's, it's not just, just a culture no, or it's just, an art. It's, it's, it's actually, common sense. It's fun, so so explain yes. it. what's it called? Feng shui. Feng shui. So feng shui is. I mean, you went to the University of Arizona. It, it's actually. It's, it's no, it's not a class. I didn't learn it there. But but I mean, but yeah. you're you're an educated yes. person. Yes. This is, yes. The, but you say it makes common sense. Explain explain what it is and why it makes common sense and. Uh, just like the sun of water, how it relaxes you, how things should be in place in one part of the house instead of the other. Um, like, like for example, the office, you know, as soon as you come in to the right, the kitchen, you know, it's like just the preferences of how the layout of the home should be. And, and um, gosh, in, in more detail, it has to be a particular situation, so I can yeah. it. But, uh, yes, um um, I just think I do so natural that I don't, I don't name it much way. Might as well. Well, let's switch from residential to commercial. I've noticed. Um, I've noticed um, some of these commercial buildings. What what I've noticed in my years is that um, you know they don't want to put in carpet because you're gonna have to replace carpet every five or six years. So they want they want to spend so that it's durable. Like when you go into um, Chipotle. I mean, Chipotle looks like you could have an NFL football game in there and not hurt a chair, a table, a floor, a wall. I mean, it really looks like it. I mean, it's it's Chipotle, but if you close your eyes and looked at it again, it could be a, a prison cell that you couldn't break out. I mean, that, that thing is built to last. Yeah. Whereas when we were little, um, the booths would be more plastic and maybe there'd be material on there that could stain plastic. It looks like they're, they're more thinking built to last instead of built. You know, do you, do you understand? Do you, do you agree with that or? Uh, yes, and uh, since I even using like pipes uh, from the water pipes or gas pipes to use for lighting fixtures, and um, it's just bringing other design elements. You know, like how to not just for saving money, but how to make it um, more durable and funner looking and change that. Just. Um, I, I think also like I'm um, I read this it's like if you make it too comfortable the shares and stuff people want to sit there for too long and the thing is like you know not make it too comfortable so so they can have more customers coming in and go. yeah at the airport all the restaurants in the food court they don't even have chairs it's like get your food and get out of here go back to your gate leave <laughs> make room for someone else um, so do you do you believe um, do you believe all this um, theories on uh, color like a lot of people say that McDonald's likes orange and yellow because it's more like anxiety tension take your food and leave whereas if they put a soft blue or um, you'd want to stay um, and then, like in a work environment like some colors they think are more soothing others are more anxiety producing do you believe in col the things like that about colors oh certainly it's just like walking into a beautiful space like a foyer of a resort or you know hotel and all of a sudden you feel better like like you feel more important and you feel like in vacation and it just looks you know you're going to a suite you know in the hotel and it's so beautiful and, or like a department store and just like marble floors and everything is so pretty you just feel different so the color has that effect and in, in reaction in people like your space um, you home uh, after a while starts getting that effect, you know. If you start thinking, "Oh, I don't like that sofa there," 
but you don't move it or not, and it just starts giving you that draw, you know, that down effect. So it's, it's, it's to me, it's very. This is why I wanted to study this career because it, um, to me, it's important to. I think it's important to beautify your space so you can feel better too, you know, not just from inside out, but also like your space out. So every time you wake up, your room, your your environment is nice. Not just when you go on vacation. And so what I'm hearing you say is that if your kids spend way too much time in the bathroom to make it like orange and red and really hard colors and ugly so they don't want to stay in there for an hour. Oh. And they'll just come out faster. <laughs> Did I get that right, Ryan? Is that... So if you made it nice with marble and no. pastel colors, no. well, it won't come I mean, out. I, 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 I was writing for that Watuki newspaper, and one time I wrote this article saying about kids, like helping kids choose their color for their uh, room, and I go, why not let them choose their color? Show them the palette, uh, kind of like narrow down so they don't go too crazy, probably, but then let them choose their color. And they probably love their room more. We want to be there more. We want to enjoy a bit more of that room. Then, then you forcing a color on them. I remember one of the first times my boys, uh, one of the, my oldest boy Eric, the first time he ever uh, wrote all over the wall. And everybody's like, how are you going to paint that? And how are you going to match it? And what are you going to do? So I drove down to uh, the uh, store. And I just bought a frame. And went and put the frame right over where he drew and just nailed it in the wall. <laughs> I said, that's art. Yeah. So I put a frame around it, but uh, that was funny. Um, so um, I think it's embracing is good. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's their room. Um, a lot of people you hear a lot of negative talk about fluorescent lighting. Uh, I mean, you hear some people just say, just you know, just if anything makes an office look more officey, it's cubicles and fluorescent lighting. What what are, what are your does that does fluorescent lighting bother you or do you think that it's good or what? No, it bothers me. <laughs> does it really bother you? Yeah. Yes. Um. I think more like natural lighting or it's, again, it's like when you go to an environment, it's lighting is done correctly. You want to be there, and if you go like to Walmart, I mean, I mean like a big, I mean Costco, and you see this fluorescent light. I mean, you might be entertained by what you're buying, but all of a sudden you just want to go, and it's, it has to do with the lighting, too, that it's just so bright. And um, as if you go into a room, and it's like the lighting that you like, and the music, and you know, the whole ambience, but lighting is part of it. Yeah, um, when you think of a Home Depot or a Costco, you think of, an, and then you just wonder if a forklift is going to come by. Yeah. And that's not, that's a different. Uh, Yes. Different environment. So definitely, I don't want it in a dental office. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, you said that when people are calling you to come to their house, it's the number one was uh, kitchen, and you said bathroom, and what was the other things you said? I thought I read. Uh, space planning. Space planning, all that. Um, why are why are businesses calling you? What what what's a what's a you, you said you usually word of mouth referral. You do the home first, and they want you to come to their business. When they come to their business, what what are they what what are they usually interested in? Um, like I have a, a customer here, I want to get the, their whole office is a realtor. Um, 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 it's called a conference table, new furniture, and then they wanted to do something in the walls that was going to be more different. So we put this really nice pattern wallpaper, and the conference table that it could. Because it, the group was like getting smaller and bigger sometimes, depending on the um, the month, the different conference setups that they had. So we act, I selected these tables that they are rearranged in different ways. So and the chairs more comfortable. So just different things that I did. Um, their offices, new desks, new chairs, also more comfortable. And, uh, lighting, change the lighting. Um, and the wallpaper. A few things that made it pop out more. If you look going there, um, it, the little changes without changing the building um, is it, from day and night, I believe. So, would, as, as the ratio of wallpaper to paint changed from the 70s to now 2017, what, what's is, is it still about 50-50, or the thoughts the same on it, or? Well, wallpaper came back really strong this in the last few months, um, years. Um, very strong, and more like 
big patterns back like from the 70s, 60s, um, very retro. Um, the ratio, um, I think it's more uh, like financial, you know, it's easier to paint. But if you want to go a step further, wallpaper is, is it another option. So wallpaper is cheaper? No, it's I, I mean, uh, painting paint, painting is cheaper, lower yeah. cost, and wallpaper is more expensive. Yes. So where would you say in the average residential house in Ahwatukee getting remodeled, what, what percent would go wallpaper versus paint? I haven't done that much wallpaper here in Ahwatukee, but uh, I probably... Um, like fifty fifty. Fifty fifty? Yes. And and uh huh. and what about um carpet versus tile? I remember um when I moved to Arizona I'd never even heard of uh there was this one type of tile. Was it called Tuscany or was it Tuscany tile? Tuscany tile, like it was some it was like it was like having a Mercedes Benz tile or whatever. But when I grew up in Kansas it was it was carpet. And when I came out here to Arizona, it was desert and tile. Um is um is this Still mostly tile, or people liking carpet more? Or is I, it I think uh, carpet is going to slowly face um, just for al allergies and for many reasons that the um, wood tile is very popular right now. Wood uh, color, or actually made of wood? Wood looking tiles. So it's a tile uh, in that looks like wood. The, okay, so it's, it's artificial tile. Yes. So, so there's, what, there's what, what's the difference between um, I wouldn't mine this out of a canyon versus I poured cement in a, in a mold? In what, a mold. What, do you, what do you... That they... What, 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 do you, what are the terms for those? That, that, that tile that looks like wood and, and a real wood piece of wood t um, flooring. Um, that's how you describe it. Um, but the, why would I recommend one than the other? I mean, if you have kids and... and pets and a lot of things that could damage the wood it's just an easier alternative to put the wood tiles right so you think carpet's going the way out yes you know my biggest interior decorating lesson is um you know arizona um in 1945 the metro only had 65,000 people and now it's four million and they had to invent the air conditioner and swamp cooler and then uh, World War II, there was a bunch of big military bases out here, so so many millions of troops came through here. They looked around and said, I like it. So when you're in Arizona, there pretty much wasn't anything here 50 years ago. But when you go to Europe, every time you see something that's a thousand years old, well, it's not made of carpet and chicken wire and throw wood. It's, it's always made of rock. And the one, the one thing you realize, if, if you want to build... Um, a house or if you, if you want to build something that's going to be there in 500 to a thousand years it's not going to be carpet and tile and paneling and wallpaper it's just going to be rock and stone and tile and marble so there's a lot I mean that really sunk into my head that you know if you put in carpet like how often would you have to replace the carpet yes and I love natural products stone the marbles the uh, um, and I, those will never go out of, like natural wood, oh, they will never go out of style. Even if the wood is damaged, you can still resurface it. Um, so I, I always prefer those, like a nice, beautiful kitchen with the wood. So, so that's kind of interesting on the cost, because if someone said to you, well, the carpet will cost a dollar, but the tile or marble or, or will be $2. Well, well that's, that's true out of the gate. But if you have to replace the carpet every 10 years, and 30 years later, you got $3 in the carpet, and you only had $2 in the tile. And that's, um, that's the point I was making. I mean, you, you go back to those, uh, I mean, it, the, the only old ones I've seen in America is um, Boston, because that's where a lot of the um, Europeans first landed. And I mean, in Boston, you'll just be like walking into some restaurant, you don't even think anything of it. And I'm about to say, built in 1612. And you're like, 1612? And what is it? It's all brick, mortar, you know, it's all, it's all rock, you know? Yeah, uh, I, I, I mean, I love it. I, in, I think maybe, I, I mean, I don't know about that, but I believe right now that this is the only country that makes the walls out of sheet rock and wood and 
and then the t mini tornado passed by, they could all blew up, you know. <laughs> Ryan, what was that um, religious place we went in Cambodia? Angkor Wat. Good memory, Ryan. You're just now Angkor Wat. <laughs> that was another classic example. Have you heard of Angkor Wat? It's the it's the biggest uh, religious uh, temple in Cambodia, and it just was beyond gorgeous. And again. You know, again, I was thinking when I was there, you know, look how they built this. They built this once, they built it right, and here it is still with tens of thousands of tourists walking all over it, and it was it looked like ants crawling on, on, a, on a brick. I mean, nothing was going to happen to it. I mean, it was just so amazingly beautiful, amazingly gorgeous, but built, built to last. Yeah, I, I believe in less is more. Starting, uh, and then if you do something, do it as you know the, with the best products available. Um, I mean, and then that gives you the best return. Yeah, and, and yeah. Um, and but they really got to think about that bit. I mean, you know, think about how old you are and how much this will cost you. So say you're listening to this and you're you're uh, forty years old. Well, hell, if you're going to live to be eighty-five. You could do it one time at 40 and still have it at 85, but you think you're saving money and do it at 40, but you got to redo it at 50 and 60 and 70 and 80. Um, you're not saving money. Um, are you a big fan of um, jacuzzis in this area? Do you think uh, jacuzzis, do you think putting in a jacuzzi helps the resale value of your house? Or we talked about swimming pools. What's your thoughts about jacuzzis? Also, because um, I know some people are putting jacuzzis in their bathroom. So what what are your thoughts of a jacuzzi tub instead of a regular tub, or even just a jacuzzi in the backyard? It's a very personal taste. Either people hate them or love them. I have customers with a beautiful jacuzzi in their bathroom that they want it out. Um, other ones want to put it in. So it's very personal taste. Um, that's one of the ones that I would not recommend. Like I would recommend a tub in that area of the bathroom, but then I would... I would Give him choices like a jacuzzi. Well, not to throw anybody under a bus, but do you think the jacuzzi bathtub is kind of like the ice maker in the refrigerator? <laughs> I mean, it seems like of the friends I can count on one hand that have a jacuzzi tub, after three or four years, it d didn't work. Do you, do you see that or not really? Do you, do you think it's like an ice maker or do you think they're built to last? Uh, the, uh, yeah, the ones I my friends had it for a while and then they let it go. Um, and it, because it was hard to keep it clean and the system or the complications and they stopped using it and then they just ended up donating it. Or, yeah. Yes. So what, what's hot and what's not in tubs? I, I see tubs uh, several different ways. Sometimes you see them built into a box. Sometimes you see them standing on, on the floor. What, what's what's uh, hot and not in right tubs? Right now standing in the tub. Standing on the top? That's the most desirable. Looking. That's the most yes. desirable? And, and people don't even use that top. Sometimes they just put it in their bathroom because of resale value in a few years. I'm like, okay. You know. yes. Yeah, you're right. Um, most people most people shower, don't they? In America, yes. In America? Yes. But other countries are more into baths? Yes. Like what countries are they more into baths? In England and France. And England? Really? European countries, yes. I guess I, 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 one of the things I've noticed most about, uh, you know, um, if you never read a book, you've only lived one life. But if you've read a hundred autobiographies, you've, you've lived a hundred lives. And um, I've lectured to dentists in um, 50 countries. Ryan and I were in, how many continents were we in last year? Africa, North America, Europe, Asia, Australia. That's five out of seven. We don't, we don't go to Antarctica because the penguins are... We have a lot of problems communicating with the penguins, <laughs> but um, oh, amazing! It seems like the Americans, the Koreans, the Japanese, the Germans, everything's in a hurry. So if I could take a shower in two minutes, why would I take a bath in in ten? But it seems like you go to like um Spain, um, you go um Spain, Spain, Brazil. You know, like uh, a dentist will have a thirty minute lunch and maybe eat at his desk. A Brazilian. And a Spanish dentist. Oh my God! They'll take an hour and a half, and they'll relax and meet friends and three sit hours. down. Yeah, three <laughs> hours. And I tell you, the older I get, the realize I realize, man, Americans, they push themselves too hard. It's like, like for instance, 
they're st they're stressed out driving to work because they're afraid they're going to be five minutes late, right? Then I go to Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, and I ask a dentist, what are your hours? And they go, what do you mean? I go, well, what time do you see your first patient? And they go, oh, you Americans. I, <laughs> I wake up, I have breakfast, I read the paper, I have coffee, then I walk one mile to work, and usually the patient and the staff are there, and I, but I, I can't tell you exactly what time it was. And then I say, well, how, how late do you work? And they go, you know, I, you know they're just so laid back. They're not into the, the and, and gosh, if the Americans, the Koreans, the Japanese could learn so much from Spain and Brazil, just slow down, take longer lunches, you know, it's like, uh, and that's probably why we don't have baths. Yeah. Um, being a single mom and having to work, deciding to work from home and um, 11 years ago for my business is now. Um, I, 11 years ago? Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. And that's a long time, making it past a decade. Thank you. And um, we two little ones by myself, but um, the, the one thing that I learned is um, to just take it easy. Like, I always, like, because I was not getting any support or anything, I was like, okay, God, what should I do now? So I just felt like every day, like, it was just, like, just living the day. And I just learned to do that, and it just flows better for me, and I, and I just... You know, sometimes I mean, there's things that happen, but but I I I love um, not having really a schedule. I mean, I do have things that I need to do, but not like a schedule where I and 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 I just feel the most blessed woman that I have my own business and I was able to raise my kids and be home with them and I have this kind of lifestyle. How many children do you have? My daughter is 22 now. My son is 19, and they're both really happy. 22 and 19. Uh, mine are uh, 22, 24, 26, 28, and I'm very happy right now because right now none of them are in jail. They're all four. <laughs> none of them are wearing an ankle bracelet. Uh, they're all uh, they're all free. Ryan, is your ankle bracelet off? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. So um, let's talk about um, online versus stores because you see. Um, you know, when we were little, it was all Sears, Macy's, uh, furniture. I mean, I, when I grew up in Wichita, I mean, the furniture stores that sold the furniture had been there forever. I mean, they were really old. And now you see Amazon coming in. You, I see I see all these places to get a bed or a mattress. But then you see mattress.com, you know. Um, and and then you hear things that... Um, I, I think one of the I, one of the most skeptical things I'm on is how come the furniture stores are always selling everything fifty percent off? I mean, you, you know, I mean, I it, it, I don't see any restaurants in Awatuki that are always saying Makayos fifty percent off this weekend, you know, and so it, um, like the dump, you know, like oh, it's we just got all this this stuff uh, was going to go bankrupt and we're going to dump it here and everything is, you know, 50% below price. How much is that as marketing gimmick scam versus real? And how much of this um, buying furniture for your house and stuff is moving online to something like Amazon as opposed to a physical furniture store in Ahwatukee? Um I think there's certain companies, for example, uh, like JCPenney, Macy's, when it comes to retail and like then like uh, um, Ashley Furniture, that they're always on sale, but it certainly has to be. They have to make em enough money to keep in business. So at least they put it to that price and then they play with the numbers. It's like a dress should have been 500, but I'm selling it for 250, but oh wow, you're getting 75%. So how about paying $50, which is usually $50 anyway. Um, so I, I I, I hate that. Um, yeah. When it comes to because of the, it doesn't build trust. No, no, and, and you go there; it's always a sale, so so it's not like yeah, yes. And but there's some, for example, like Target, where you go. I think that is the price. Either you find that on sale is one thing, but do you know that you're always going to find the same price if you most of the time. There was a furniture store back in Arizona back in the day that. Had it going at a business sale. I think I think every year for ten years in a row, and it's like it's well, like they make the most money. Yeah. it's like a gimmick that. But um, even I, as a designer, when I'm looking for a part 
piece of product, you know, for like a faucet for my customer or a piece of furniture, I put the name in Google and everybody that sells it, it will come out. If Amazon or any other company has it, and then it will show you the price of who it sells it for. So it's like a competition and line of, of the same product who sells for the different prices. And um, I mean, it's, it's just a, like an open market right now where, um, and how yeah. easy to buy it. You know, who do you trust to buy it from too? Yeah, well, well trust, trust is um, the one thing brands had going for it. I mean, if you trusted this coffee or if you trusted this store, or you trust this belt, then when you went in there, you could relax and just grab a bunch of items. Yeah. But then when all the names are different and this and that, but yeah, I, 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 I think um, one of the biggest changes I've seen in just like the last five to 10 years is how social media has kind of been destroying trust. But at the same time, I, I worked for major companies when I finished my education and for a few years. And and, um, I, and, and the truth was that at the end I hated it because I couldn't have trust. As, as I presented my, in front of my, myself, in front of my customer to sell them a project, it could have been a $200,000 project. And I'm telling them, you know, what they're going to receive, at what time. But, and the company would not back me up. There will be the the the, the cabinetry line was taking months to deliver pieces of the cabinetry that they needed, and, and or you know the contractor didn't finish something right that it should have been this way, and people trusted me because I was working for a big company, and I hated that. I'm like no, I, if I'm gonna put myself in front of my customer, I want them to trust me and whoever's behind me. You know how who am I representing? So the reason for my starting my business too was because I wanted my products that I can trust. The cabinet lines that I know they're gonna deliver the right, my, the contractors are gonna do the right work. That, the, um, and that, um, and that's how there's no complications and all that. People think because they're going with a big company that, that they can trust them, but it, it, even if they have a problem, it'd be harder for them to go sue them or to go even to talk to the manager because he's so busy. So, I mean, in that respect, um, I also wish and hope that customers also look at like a persons like me, you know, trying to change the industry in that way. Because, I mean, here comes a big, you know, box and, and they put employers like, like probably me, I was qualified, but, um, but they could not deliver, so was, and I ended up like being stressed and couldn't sleep and and having to talk to the customer next day, and the manager just gave me the shoulder, and I hated that. That's that's my whole reason, and besides that, I wanted to be with my kids more time before I started my business. Um, but yeah, um, when you have so many people involved in in this in putting together like a kitchen, you have the plumber, the electrician, the tile set or the cabinet installer the, and um, the, I mean I probably forgot, and the painter um, and then uh, coordinating everybody um, and having everybody to go work together and so it's very important the trust and, and, and knowing that they're, they're going to be there and deliver and the products are going to be there and I mean I have to rebuy stuff, you know whatever it takes to get my customers happy. And that's that's the big difference in going for with the big company that you think because you can trust them, or just like like you said, going to the dump and saying this cost, this share is uh, five thousand dollars, but they lower it to a thousand, and as a if you're not an educator chopper, you think what a deal, let me buy it, but actually it was a six hundred dollar share, so they make money out of you. So that's that's the. That's the one thing about, uh, well, it's a good thing and bad thing that consumers are being more aware of where to shop and who to trust. And Trust is everything. I mean, I uh, when you go to the mechanic, I mean, he says, you know, you need a new alternator. Well, how the hell do I know if I need a new alternator? When your air conditioner goes out and the repairman comes in and says, we can't fix it with a shot of Freon and some duct tape. We, you need a whole new air conditioner. I mean, how, how do I know? Um, you know, and um, I think um, I, you know, the society, this is why we're pioneering local social because 
Um, the the other big platforms like Facebook and they're just filled with like fake news and and and, and people are sharing stuff. Ninety percent of all the things shared on Facebook, the original person never even opened it and read it. So they're just sharing clickbait headlines, and and so then and then you go to Yelp reviews. I mean, I have restaurant friends and. You know, they work their butt off and they open up this restaurant and they they give it their all. Then some idiot comes in and says, worst meal I've ever eaten. Really? Really? It's the worst meal you've ever eaten or you're a really bad guy? You know, and, and so I think that people are going to want to start to go in more local to deal with the trust issue. I mean, I, I'm, I'd, rather, I'd rather take my car to Gruelic when I know that his kids go to the same high school as mine, and I know where his house is, you know what I mean? I'd rather, I'd rather deal with the, 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 the international world of Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn is, is I think, um, I mean, like, when was the first time you even heard the word fake news? I mean, how many years ago was that? I mean, it wasn't when you were little. No. It wasn't when you were a U of A. No. <laughs> and now it's every other term. I mean... It's so sad when you're. I'm talking to my boys or their friends, and they just sit there and say, "You know what? I I don't know if I trust anything anymore. I mean, I just I just don't trust people. I mean, it's almost like when anybody's saying something, are they spinning you? Are they selling you? Are they lying to you? Yes. And um, so I, I hope Tuki Town uh, restores trust in social media to Awatuki. And uh, I am. Um, it was a uh, huge honor. That you came by my house today. That oh, means thank you. I mean, and first of all, just just that um, eighty percent of new businesses, eighty percent of restaurants, are out of business in two years. Um, I've been at the corner of 40th and Elliott, and then that Safeway Plaza there. I can I I could sit down for an hour thinking of all the stores that came and gone in the last thirty years in that center. I mean, hell, the the Pizza Hut to near zeros, the chicken house to, um, you know, biscuits. I mean, and right now half of it's vacant. So just the fact that she's been in business for 11 years in Ahwatukee. I mean, any any business that lasts that long, you got to be doing a lot of things right. You got to be doing a lot of happy customers, building a lot of trust. And it was a huge honor, Claudia, that you came by today to talk about interior design. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Oh, thank you.